Are chicks on anabolic steroids hot? It's my informal survey that I did on my Instagram channel, and I asked a lot of my patients about this. And I want to present to you exactly what I discovered on this informal survey, because I got a lot of results. I got a lot to tell you today. So I want you to follow me on my Instagram channels, Dr. Thomas O'Connor, and the other one is Anabolic Doc App. That's what we have because the Anabolic Doc app is where I'm really giving all my information to you guys because I can't take any more new patients. So I want to give everything to you informationally based right on my app. Let's get right into this incredible topic. Are chicks hot on steroids? Chicks have been taking steroids for decades. We all know that back in the day you had professional bodybuilders using light amounts of steroids and then it ramped up where the IFBB, I believe, shut it down for a while and now it's kind of come back. So I'm not really in the bodybuilding world, so I'm in the powerlifting world more, right? Everyone knows that. So what did I discover on this informal survey? It did get a lot of results and tons of attention. Great topic. Overall, men definitely give a thumbs up to women utilizing some pets. Just not too much. It all comes down to the doses. And I know it sounds so chauvinistic, and I'm going to go into that because women, again, I'm just delivering the news here and interpreting the data. So men did say, though, Doc, Remember the old days with Corey Everson and Gladys Portuguese? And her prime was the hottest and the best. So you could check out those professional women back in the day. They were definitely using some PEDs, but definitely not to the extent that some women do now. Now, some men definitely love tons of big ass muscle on women. No question, hands down. But it's all about the drug usage and about the drug types. And I'm going to cover that. Stay with me in the video. Let's talk about the breakdown. The first part is the anatomical changes. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you're concerned for your testosterone levels. In addition to testosterone, you want to check sexual binding globulin, estradiol, free androgen index, and potentially cortisol. That's where I want to talk about today's sponsor. Let's get checked. They're a worldwide leader in at-home test kits. So you can get a comprehensive look at your testosterone levels and other labs without even leaving your home. You can order a test kit that will be delivered to you in discrete packaging. Once your sample arrives in the laboratory, confidential results will be available from your secure online account within two to five business days. These results are reviewed by a clinician and a member of Let's Get Checked nursing team may call you to review your results. Let's Get Checked laboratories are CLIA approved and CAP accredited, which are the highest ranking levels of accreditation for labs. So if you want to test your hormone levels without having to leave your home, visit TryLGC dot com and only for the anabolic doc fans check out in the description the link and use promo code anabolic doc is the anatomical changes that men talk to me they went right into the anatomical features of what happens to a woman when they use anabolic androgenic steroids the face does change and again it's all drug dependent female person dependent and usage dependent, dose dependent. The face becomes androgynous. They lose hair. The voice changes. Now, the men that I've talked to, and of course you could look at some of these comments, They and I want more comments from you guys right here. Let's continue this survey, please. They talked about that, Doc, when a woman starts doing some steroids, 
her voice changes and it's very sexy, very hot that she gets that raspy voice. You know, kind of like a teenager going through puberty, they've told me. It's incredible. So what do you guys think about that? But it is true that that voice will stay with her. So that's pretty much something that's permanent. And all women, I think, who do steroids, they, they know that. Hopefully they know that before they get into it. Skin will change. It can be some very bad acne. It's the same for men. The breasts will lose the fat. So steroids build muscle and it just redistributes the fat. Breast will change. The clitoris, not going to get too much into that here. It's a little bit creepy and weird for me to talk about like this, but we know that the clitoris is going to grow substantially depending on what kind of drugs that she's on. I'll cover those in the end, the more androgenic drugs. But even Anivar can grow the clitoris. Depends on how much and how long she's exposed. In the end of the day, muscle tissue. It builds muscle, obviously. Women love it, and it is hot, right? Muscle's hot on both men and women. So let's keep going. Second piece of the breakdown, mood. So just like men, let's be honest here, guys. It's an asshole. It's an asshole on steroids. So women can be short-fused and moody. So that's a very specific piece. Again, the rest of this stuff is going to be pretty much the same for men. So you guys have to think about that. Are we being chauvinistic? Is it really true? Is there a double standard? Let's think about that, guys. Now, let's talk about the sex piece because the mood and the sex go hand in hand. So, so many men have told me that I don't want my woman, my girl, wife, girlfriend, whatever partner, to be on steroids really too much, and I don't like it because the man gets jealous. This is an incredible feature that came out with this survey. Men get jealous because men, people are jealous, and if she's hypersexual, well, that's a threat to the relationship, just like it is for a man being hypersexual. So let's think about that. So the guy doesn't think it's that hot or sexy if it's his girl because she's going to be hot, hotter, and she's going to be hypersexual. What's going to go on with that? I've had a pro bodybuilder tell me she was living in California at the time. And she was so hypersexual that she was working somewhere that she was pulling guys in off the street to have sex with them. I don't know if I believe it, but I guess I had to believe it because that's what she told me. Okay. Number three is fertility and health. Just, again, like the men, it's going to affect fertility and health. And when you see some of the comments on the Instagram, you know, I don't want my wife doing it too much and so on and so forth because it's going to impair the family and we have to make family decisions. Well, how about you, buddy? I mean... It's going to impair your fertility. That's what I do in my day job. So again, we have to think, are we being fair here? So, because we're both the same in that we both, women and men, have hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axes. We have testicles, they have the ovaries. Now, when it comes to this, the health effects, this is where I could chime in here. We definitely see some deaths in women bodybuilders. And... No one knows exactly what that's from. It's probably from the electrolyte imbalances because when they're cutting, they're using crazy diuretics. Let's be honest. But if a woman has an underlying arrhythmia or cardiac disease potential or hypercoagulable state with blood clots and pulmonary embolism, that's going to potentially happen. But let's be honest. We don't see anything in the deaths of women versus men because men have underlying heart disease much worse than women and we just put that on gear let's be honest about that of course there's no direct studies and there's never going to be direct studies on this stuff because no one cares the cardiac risks for men natural men are more prominent earlier than women because of it's it's been proven and then you put it on gear and that's why we see the early events in men. I could tell you that because this is my day job. But more women using gear, being exposed to it longer. There's some unlucky women with bad genes. 
for hypercoagulable states, both on the venous side, DVTs, pulmonary embolisms, they'll kill you. And on the heart side. And so the more we see women doing steroids, like men and people, we're going to see complications. Let's move into the drugs. What are the drugs? We did the analysis, and I think everyone knows this, but let me run the drugs for you. So the most common drugs for women are Anivar, Primobolin, Winstrol, low doses of Alcopoise. I think a lot of men, people don't realize that. Everyone knows Anivar, Primo, Winstrol, Clenbuterol. It's not an anabolic steroid, but it is widely used by women. They just put up with that, the Clen shakes. It is interesting. I've taken a lot of patients in that are women over the years when I have done consults, and these are the drugs they're on. Now, they don't like to do, however, it's done, testosterone too much. Little, little baby doses of testosterone are done by middle-aged and older women because it makes them feel better. And I don't get involved with that because I don't prescribe that, but it's being prescribed widely, and I'm not against it if the physician thinks that's what the woman needs. But again, you're gonna have side effects. You're gonna have side effects and they have to be weighed out person by person, clinical case by clinical case. Anadrol, testosterone, anadrol, D-ball, Tren, the heavy duty drugs. These drugs typically are not used by women, but we know on the high levels of powerlifting for women, strong men for women, and bodybuilding, they are using these drugs. And you could just see those side effects. And the last piece is with the drugs, you see that women will say they, they use post cycle therapy. Now that's very interesting because these are anabolic androgenic steroids. They're inherently derivatives directly or indirectly from testosterone, the NOR19, the test based of course, and DHT derived steroids. Those are our steroids in the world. There's hundreds, if not thousands of formulas. So when we use PCT, that's classically been related to resetting a man's hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis with selective estrogen receptor modulators, both clomid and tamoxifen, and HCG, and of course, other anti-estrogens used in small doses. And there's other drugs now that are used. It's getting quite gnarly and quite complex. But the classic PCT has been setting for men. So women say you, they do these drugs and they use proper PCT. That's interesting to me because they're resetting their natural hormonal levels, which are really looking at the hypothalamus pituitary and their gonadal ovarian and to some degree, adrenal axis. And there's no data for this whatsoever. And that's why I'm here trying to bring out legitimate questions and data because we're moving forward together, us all together, men and women, there's gonna be more PEDS. And I just wanna make sure it's as safe as possible for people. So what do you guys think about this, this survey? You can take a look at that. Please get on my Instagram. Please get on the app, anabolic.app.com. We are killing it there. It's blowing up. We are adding more and more access to me with live Zoom man-to-man -man meetings where you could ask questions to me directly and be in these think tanks with me and so many other men all over the world. Thank you, Pakistan and Asia. Thank you, Australia, the UK, all over Europe, all over North America, guys up in Canada. Thank you so much. Let's get some great comments going, guys. And I really hope this helps not just men, but women think about what they want to do regarding pets. Thank you.